In today's show, we're gonna learn about Power Apps repeating tables. That's right, the thing in InfoPath that you've all been asking me for for months, I finally solved in a way that I think is good. All right, so we're gonna use galleries, we're gonna make those the editing surface, believe it or not, and we're gonna do that in order to get the tab interface and get the control and the flexibility that you're really looking for so you can make a repeating table not just be this boring thing, but make it anything your heart desires. So it should be a pretty epic type of video. We're also gonna break this up into a few different videos. This first video is gonna be a walkthrough of the app, and then we're gonna show you how to build the repeating table. The second video will then talk to you about how to display, show you how to use cascading menus to display back those results. And in the third video, we're gonna go in and we're gonna add a bunch of custom functionality to get really super geeky. So, should be a lot of fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're gonna do Power Apps repeating tables. Yep, just like you've always had an info path and you've been begging me for for months, I've finally come up with a solution that I'm ready to share with you guys on how to do this. And the trick to it's gonna be is we're gonna use galleries, right? Because galleries are gonna let us have all the controls and all the flexibility that we want. Because one of the things I wanna do is I wanna be able to do tab to data entry, right? I wanna be able to sit there and pound in the keyboard enter data, enter data, tab, 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 go, and not have to take my hands off the keyboard because that's really important to me in data entry solutions. We're also going to look at how we do cascading menus to make those uh, work, or work, make those work so that we have full views back into the data so we can edit the data after the fact. We're gonna go back in later and we're gonna add editing of the data in line as you're making changes, which sounds really easy and trivial, but turns out it takes a lot of code on our part. Um, just lots of fun little things. We're gonna introduce the for all function, we're gonna use some, um, a lot of fun things. And hopefully once we kind of get all this done, then we'll package it up and in a later video, we'll go in and we'll add some flow, uh, Microsoft Flow to get ourselves approvals. I know, it's a lot, it's overwhelming. It may end up becoming two videos. We'll see where I get here in a few minutes, but I'm really excited to share this with you. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so first things first, let's give you a walkthrough of the app so you can be as excited as I am about what we're about to do here. So here we go, we're gonna say, let's create a new expense. And so here you see we're dropped into the expense creator. And so this top line, this is just a normal form control. And so what we're going to do is we're just gonna call this my trip to Redmond. I think I went there on 6-6-2018. And then I, that was travel. Now then notice that I've made this field um, not editable, and so what we're gonna do is automatically calculate the total expense. So this whole line here is going to write over to our SharePoint list where we did an expense master, right? So here we just have a title, a date, and um, type of expense, and total expense. I made the ID column visible just to make it easier for us to correlate and check on things later, but not required. Also keep in mind as we do this example that I went with a bare a minimum amount of columns, right? Because I didn't want you to watch me kind of do the same thing over and over again. So you would definitely in your solution will probably have more columns, better columns, you're better looking than me. I get it, but this is enough to teach you how to do all this, okay? So then over here, oh, over here. So then now that we've done this, we're gonna go in and we're gonna start adding our item. So this is a gallery. What I've done is I've made the gallery with a bunch of editable controls, which is a little different than what we normally use galleries for. But so we're gonna say this is a car, and that cost me $342.23, why not? And so then I'm gonna do, right, this is new, I'm gonna hit the tab key. Notice it highlighted the disk, I'm gonna hit the space bar. Everything up there finished, it's all saved and locked. And if we hit the tab key again, we're right back into typing. So that way you can do all the data entry on this, all these line items, tab, 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 tab which is what, if you've ever done any bulk data entry, you know that the idea of having to click with the mouse is terrible. So I made this, and this was one of the things I really fought with, stopped me from releasing this video months ago, is it may or may not have been broken, the whole tabbing uh, interface, but it works now, so yeah, let's do this thing. All right, so we'll hit tab, the boat expense was $25, tab, space bar, tab again here, we'll say um, plane was $812, tab, enter, all right, and so then you can see it starts scrolling. Um, it's because I made my fixed size. You can make that handle how you want. This is how I did it. But I don't need this bottom line, so I'm gonna X out of it. Okay, so this looks good. Oh no, boat was not 25, it was 250. Oh, I'm glad you caught that. 
Click the edit pencil. We can go back up here. Now notice right now the save button's active because all my data is saved. If we go up here and do 250, as soon as we click out of that field, you have unsaved changes, save is locked down. Also notice, right, total expense is taking, it's following along, it's keeping up. So when I hit save right here, 1404, oh, I didn't want that new line though, so we'll X out of that. There you go. So now we've got all of this stuff, right? A form up here for master. This gallery is actually using a collection, but when we save this gallery, um, so we'll hit save and make it start happening. Hit save. So it submits the form, boom. On success of submitting the form, it patches the contents of this gallery using a for all function into this SharePoint list. And so if we go over here and hit refresh, we'll see that item number 15, which I guess I should have shown you over here, so we'll do a refresh on this list too. All right, there's 15, trip to Redmond. But so over here now, master ID of 15 is tied to car, boat, and plane. So these three items are line items for the other one. So this is our repeating table example. And we're using SharePoint to do this, but there's no reason you couldn't do this and probably wouldn't want to do it anyway. And something like Azure SQL, or if you're crazy, you could go do this back over in uh, Excel. But you know, I decided to do this from SharePoint because most of the people asking for repeating tables were trying to do what? They were trying to replace InfoPath. And in that case, they were using SharePoint as their data source. So that's why we made the example here, but don't feel like you're stuck using SharePoint. Okay, so now that that's all working, let's go over here and we'll hit back. I could have had save navigate, but I was trying to make this easier to kind of watch. So back, let's say view and edit expenses. So we view and edit expenses. So here are all of the expense items that I have um, are over here, right? So this would match up with what was in the master list. If I click on any of these anywhere in here, let's just click this top one. That is going to set this gallery visible, which shows me all the line items. It also shows me the sum of expenses. If I want to edit cars, yep, let's edit that one. Let's say, you know what, car, it was actually cars, and it was, in, it was $343, right? So what's going to happen, notice sum of expenses is 104. So we're going to say save changes. That's going to write back to this SharePoint list, and then it's going to write back to the master list, right? So it's got to write to two places, to keep it all going. Um, you could take and make this look a lot better. You can make it look exactly like the other form. I just thought this was an easier way. And I also want to show off a new concept here that we'll talk through. And that's where I don't actually have to click on this icon or this icon. I've made the whole uh, line item, the whole card selectable. Because I don't want my users to have to think. So, you know, anything I can do to make their lives easier, I'm here for. I threw refresh buttons down here. Um, Power Apps has been grumpy with me today around refreshing the data. So for my testing purposes, I've just added refresh buttons. You could add refresh buttons also. Um, and so a lot of times I'll have refresh buttons while I'm testing and then right before I go live, I'll pull those out, but that doesn't matter too much. All right, so are you excited? You're excited. Well, let's, let's go build this thing. So let's switch over here to our uh, app. And then we're going to say, we want to create a blank app using the tablet layout. Cool. Okay, so after a few seconds, the app builder loaded up here. Now, one of the things I'll note is I'm going to skip some of my best practices around naming and, you know, using color screens and designs and all that stuff, right? Because I just want to concentrate on the new skill, which is the repeating table. All right, so on this screen, though, I'm going to need a button. So we're going to start a button. And we're going to call this button Create New Expense, like so looks good and then we'll do a new screen so we'll do a blank one and we'll call this the uh, new item like so and so then we'll set this button and we'll kind of come back and forth a lot so I apologize now but we kind of want to make and build all this in context so navigate to new item and do a cover like so okay then we'll take advantage of the new functionality we'll hit, hold down the alt key press the button, woohoo! So we're over here, and so what I wanna do is I'm gonna need a form. So I'm gonna grab a form, and we're gonna do an edit form. And for our data source, we're gonna add a new one, and then we're gonna grab my SharePoint one. And look at that, my SharePoint site shows up, yay! And then I'm gonna grab both expense details and expense master right now. So I'm gonna say connect, 
figure it's a handy old trick, saves us a couple round trips. So then we're gonna change the data source to expense master. It's like, hey, do you want me to redo everything? Yes, I didn't want you to do what you just did, so get rid of it. Boom, okay. We're going to make it a four column layout. And then all we need is title, data, type of expense, and total expense. So then we're just gonna start D checking boxes. I'll fast forward to this for you. There we go, that looks a lot better. So we'll close this guy out of the way and we'll go ahead and make this take up the whole screen, whoop. Yep, it did this to me earlier too. So we'll go back in here, we'll say, hey, be three columns, now be four columns. And Power Apps, we've been, we've been arguing a lot today. What do you do? We have our good days, we have our bad days, okay? So title, date, expense, right? So you can make these column names better. You can put some text up above, a label to kind of explain. I'm not gonna mess with that, but you could definitely do that. What I do wanna mess with is I'm gonna click on this field. I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? This card, I wanna be able to edit it. So we're gonna say advanced. I'm gonna say unlock this card. And so we're gonna change this one. I'm gonna say your property is going to be display mode. So right now it's using the parent display mode. No, thank you. I'm gonna say we want you to be display mode view. Okay, so that's what's going to make it so that the people entering data can't input data. And then in a minute we'll come back up here and we'll put in the formula to calculate what goes there. All right, but that looks correct to me. Okay, so that will get us um, the form and I'll put our data in the master. Now we wanna write our, the rest of our data over to details but we can't just do that directly. So what we're gonna do is we create a collection and then that collection we're gonna update and then we'll push that to details when the time comes. So to do that, we're gonna switch back over to the other screen. Okay, so then back over here, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna edit our button. We need to do a couple things. So we were just navigating, but before we navigate, we need to create our form, right? We need to get our form in edit mode or in new mode. So we're gonna say new form. Well, we'll kind of do this to break it up, right, so new form, form one. So then that's going to put our form over there in new mode, so it's ready to be edited, so we couldn't do that before. And then the other thing that we needed to do, the reason we came over here in the first place, was we need to create that collection in order for us to be able to have our data over there. And so to create a collection, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use clear collect, right? So the reason for that is because every time you create a new expense, we want a new collection. So in this instance, we're gonna use clear collect and then subsequently we're gonna use collect. And we'll kind of see that as we go. We're gonna create a collection, we're gonna call it expense collection, just like that. And then where are the items? We need two items, and so we're gonna have a line item. And we're just gonna set that to be blank, right? So we just need a, because all we're really trying to do is create the column. So create a blank column called line item, and then create me a column called line cost. Remember Power Apps is case sensitive, so don't mess that up and they're just gonna set its value to zero. So we're gonna close our brackets like that. Okay, so put our form in new form mode so people can enter um, data, that makes sense. And then create a new collection by clearing the old one if it was there, name it expense collection, we'll have two columns, line item, line cost, and then navigate over to that screen. Awesome. So then now we'll take advantage of the functionality for holding down the Alt key, press create new expense, boom. We're over here, we're ready to go. And so what we need to do now is we need to insert a gallery. So insert gallery, vertical. Pay no attention to the fact it says gallery five, like Shane's messed this up a whole bunch, dog barking, it's been a rough night. But so over here on the drop down, you'll see that there is an option for expense collection, right? Because we've created that, so boom. And then for our layout, we want just a title layout. You could use blank, but I always feel more comfortable with uh, starting with one that has some data because then we come over here, we're going to delete this one out like so. We're going to delete this little guy. So now we basically have a, de a delete a blank one without any of the data. So then now we want to make sure we're inside of here. We are, and so we're going to say text and text input. Boom, and add it inside the gallery. Very important, don't mess that up. And so what do I want to show here? I want to show line item, right? That should be the default value. We'll grab the label, we'll throw a label right above this, and so the label here is just going to be uh, expense item, and so, you know, clearly you can name these whatever you want. I'm just trying to make these easy. Things Shane can spell well. 
All right, that looks fine. So then we're still in here. We'll add another one. So we'll say another text input. We'll grab this, we'll put it over here. And so for this one, we're gonna have it show the line cost. Nope, zero, so we know it's showing our stuff. And then another label. We'll throw this label right here. And we're gonna say, all right, label, I want you to be um, expense cost. I don't know. Creativity and naming things, not my thing. But there you go. You can see now that we've got a gallery that is going to display what's in it, but it's also going to be editable because that's what we want to do. So expense item, there's nothing there. This one's zero. Well, when people put stuff here, we need to save that. So to save that, we're going to say icons and we're going to do a save icon. Now grab this icon, pull it over here. Okay. Now stop. I want you to listen. Pay attention to me. Yay. I know you zoned out. It's okay. Very important, if you want the tabs to work right, right? And that was what I spent all my effort, so I hope you want the tabs to work on. What this has to happen is that this item has to be below these fields. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna resize it, and I'm gonna pull it just slightly below the size. Oh, let's go down here. There we go, I'm gonna make a tiny one. So if you put it up here, it's gonna break your tab order. If you put it right here, it should work, but this one makes me nervous because that's too close. So I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna pull it one little spot below so I know that these items are higher because that's how it determines what tab to automatically do. So make sure you get that right. If you send me a screenshot and say, my tabs aren't working, Shane, your videos are dumb, I'm gonna get a screenshot, I'm gonna look at it and just circle a big red pin and say, this is your problem, okay? So don't let that happen to you. Okay, so now that we have this in the right place, you can start drifting off again, sorry about that. So what I wanna do is when you press this button, I need two things to happen. And because I keep messing this formula up, I'm just gonna paste it in and then we'll talk about what it does. So we're going to say, all right, I wanna patch, oh, and it's like, uh, so patch, that is going to update the current expense collection. We're gonna update this item. So we're gonna change this row of data and we're going to set line item to be input item dot text, which has a red mark because I need to go over here and name this input item. All right, so I told you I wasn't going to waste a bunch of time um, naming this stuff, but I got to do this these ones to make sure this works right. And then we're going to change this other one to be input cost. Now, right, the most correct solution is you should be naming everything along the way, but I just wanted to make sure that you had, um, you know, saw those two because it's going to make this formula make more sense, right? So patch the expense collection, patch this row, set line item to be whatever they typed in this box, set line cost to be whatever they typed in this box. Now, they typed in text, so we got to convert it to a number, so we're going to use the value function for that, okay? Semicolon, right, we're done with that. So that gets this data's updated, then we're going to do a collect, right? And so collect is going to add a new item to our collection. So add a new row and we're just going to set it to blank and blank or blank and zero again. This is how you get that repeating table functionality. That's the whole reason you're here. When you create this row, it's going to have the blank stuff and we're going to be able to fill it in. So let's just see it in action, right? So let's hit play. So expense item, we're going to do Shane, tab over here, we'll do a 33, hit tab. We're gonna hit the space bar, boom, we're now down here. Now, you'll notice if I hit the tab key right now, it doesn't work. That's an issue with the previewer. So it works, right, I demoed it earlier, this same setup works in, when you play the app, but when you're in the preview mode, for whatever reason, the tab key gets lost. No big deal. But so then now you go over here and you say taco, and then you say 22, save, boom. So we see our repeating table functionality, right? We've got the cute little separators. So you can customize this, right? This is a gallery. This is why I wanted to do it with a gallery because now we have complete functionality. You wanna put pictures in there and picture controls and make it all pretty. Yeah, you can do that. You wanna have different colors, alternating things. You can do that. You have complete control over this stuff because it's in a gallery. And all it is is the collection over and over and over again. Pretty straightforward. So now that we've got a way to enter the master item and enter the line items, let's figure out how to write that to SharePoint. It is not difficult. Let's make this a little smaller too. It looks ugly. There we go. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna insert a button. I'm gonna drag it down here and I'm gonna say, 
Let's name this the save button. Very, very creative naming. And so when you select that button, we're gonna do just one thing. We're going to submit form, form one. Right, that's the name of this form, these three, these four boxes up here, okay? So we're gonna just submit that. Now, wait a minute, but what about this data? Glad you asked. Well, this data can't get written until we know what this one's value is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to the form and we're gonna take advantage of the fact that the form has this capability to do, um, know what its last one was. So we're gonna say form one, we hit the drop down, and we're gonna say on success. So when this form is successfully submitted, we wanna do some stuff. What do we wanna do? <laughs> this is where we're gonna do some crazy stuff again. We're going to do what is called a for all. So for all is going to loop through a data source or table that we give it to. So for example, our expense collection. And so it's gonna run one time for each line in there. In our case, we have three lines right now, really only two we wanted, but that, that's a different problem. So we got two lines. Well, what do you wanna do? Well, for each one of those lines, I want to patch, okay? But now we're not patching the expense collection. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to patch expense details. That's the SharePoint list we wanna to write to. So we're going to, we want to create new items. So when you want to create new items with patch, you're going to do the defaults function and then just the uh, data source name again. And so what that does is, um, oh, not expense collection. Sorry, I hit the wrong one. You guys knew better than that. Expense details, okay? So you want to patch expense details and you want to create a new record, so you're going to say defaults expense details. So don't overthink it. That's how patch works. So then now what updates do we want to make? So what you need to do is you need to go back over here and look at your expense details. Now, I know from trial and error that this column is actually named title. It is not named expense item, so let's get that right. So let's go over here. Oh, let's go over here. So we're going to say, all right, title, you're going to equal line item, comma, what other column do we have? We have the item cost. We're gonna say item cost. You're going to equal line cost. Cool, cool. And then we need one more. We have this column called master ID, right? And so that is the ID of the item from this list. So how do we get that? The way that we get that, I'm gonna do a colon, is we're gonna say, hey, form one, dot last submit dot id so that's going to get form one it's going to get the um, the last record that was one we just submitted and pull its id so then we'll do a close like that close like that boom we are cooking with gas the only thing we haven't done is we need to go up here and fix total expense to update total expense what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and so we set the display mode to view already. But let's go to default. So right now it's parent.default. Well, that doesn't help us. What we're going to do is we're going to use the sum function. So we're going to say sum. And so with sum, you can either just give it numbers and it'll add them up, or we can give it a data source like expense collection. Oh. And then we're going to say, hey, why don't you add up the line cost like that? 33 plus 22 plus zero is 55, boom. So then now, right, if we're over here and we're like, oh, this is actually 330, and then we hit save, 352. Oh, pretty nice, pretty nice. All right. I don't know about you guys, but I think we've done all the pieces. I think we can try and save this over to SharePoint and uh, we should be in good shape. So let's go back over here. Let's say play. Let's say create new expense. All right, so what's the title? First try, like that. The date, we'll just use the date picker to pick today. Say okay. Find items, make it hardware. Total expense, right, zero. I can't edit that right now. So the expense item is a hammer, I don't know. Probably not the hardware I was thinking when I made the name, but what do you do? Expense cost is 12, save, and I don't know why I use the key, the mouse, I didn't need to. Um, we'll do a screwdriver, keeping with our weird scenario, 33. 
there we go. And then finally we'll do a wrench. And 44, and tab. And remember, my tabs are not working when going from here to here. That's because we're in the preview mode. Not a big deal, it'll absolutely work on the other side and I'll prove it to you when we're all done. Okay, so then now we're gonna hit the save button. We're gonna cross our fingers. All right, that one went away. This, the dot stops, what we call the ants marching. So we'll X out of that. We'll go over here. Now we have an X, what is this? Oh, it's mad about something. That's all right, let's go over and check. So we'll go right here, we'll say refresh. First try, we wrote that part, 89, we got that part. Good, good, good. Go over here, we'll do a refresh here. We do not have our items. That's not cool. So apparently that red X was trying to tell us something. So let's go over here and look at our on success. Um, For all, we patch expense details, de default title, is that, that, that? Oh, you see the little um, red dot way out here? We were missing a parenthesis. Oh, we were so close. All right, well, what do we do? We soldier back in. We go in, we say play, we say create new expense. Title is try to. We'll do this, we'll do this. We'll say something like that, travel, car, oh. 33, save, truck, like that, 33, save also, so 66, we'll say save again, we'll cross our fingers again, the ants are done marching, oh, let's see, over here, try to, yay, do a refresh here, hey, look at that, we got car, we got truck, and then we have um, a big old nothing. So this is one of the downsides of what we've done so far. We have not accounted for, we were creating blank rows. So we'll need to fix that, but we're not ready to fix that yet. But there you go. We have now wired this stuff up. We're doing pretty good. So let's go over. Let's exit out of this. And so, all right, so save. That submits the form, so that's not gonna help us. Let's go to form one. All right, and so we did all of this, but the last time we wrote a blank record, right? Because this last item was blank. So what do we want to do? We're going to use our friend if, right? I love if. And so we're going to say if line item, or no, we're going to say is, if is blank line item, then we want to patch. No, that's not right. We don't want to do it if it's blank, so we're going to say the opposite of that. So if line item is not blank, right? So if not blank line item, then patch. Right? And we've done this before. This is that opposite logic. And so basically this is going to skip anyone where expense item hasn't been filled out. We'll add the extra parenthesis on the end that we need now. All right, so that feels better. Let's go over here. Let's say hit play, create a new expense. Title three, we'll pick another date. Say okay, <laughs> wasteful is definitely what this is. Try three, 33, save. So then now we know there's that blank item sitting there. We'll say save. All right, that went really fast. Go over here, do a refresh. Boom, the only one tied to 18 is try three. So all we had to do was basically do a check, right? So every time we're just checking to see if it's blank, if it's not blank, then we're going to patch it. If it is blank, we're just gonna do nothing. We're gonna skip over it. So that's how we handle it. Now, in a later video, we're gonna go in and we're going to do a little more manipulation to avoid creating so many blank lines, but this little uh, piece of uh, functionality there, because it's very natural to have a blank line at the end of your expense report, right? Because you kept creating new lines and you always get that last one that has nothing. So this is how we don't write that to our data source. And I think based on timing, I think we're gonna stop right here, right? Because this has given us everything, this has given us that first pass. 
So in the next video, we're gonna go in and we're gonna talk about how to view these results and view this. So set those cascading galleries up and show you some tricks there. And then when we finish that one, then we're gonna go in, we're gonna come back to here and we're gonna add, add the inline editing and stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Definitely leave me comments below, feelings about how you think of my uh, expense solution. Love to hear them. Also remember that this comes from my work with customers. So if you need me to help you implement this solution or something similar in your environment, reach out. Always happy to with the old Power Apps 911. So thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again, couple quick thoughts. One, I didn't remind you during the video, but you need to save. So make sure you save, especially if you're waiting to watch the next video. Auto save doesn't kick in until you do the first save. Save your Power App. Don't lose all that work we just did together. Secondly, if you would, click the old subscribe button, right? That always helps me out. It keeps me uh, going, it keeps me making these videos. If you need to work together, hit me up up there at Power Apps 911. Always happy to. And finally, if you're looking for the video, the next video in this series, It'll be about right here as soon as I make it. So give me a couple days, but it'll be here real soon. Probably by the time you're watching this, it'll be here. Or if you want, somewhere else on the screen, I'll put a list to the Power Apps playlist so you can just go and watch more of my Power Apps videos. All right, thanks and have a great day.